Hello everyone. Well, this month has been a lot busier than I thought it would be, so I decided I need to get a video out. Uh, so, I thought with the you-know-what on the rise and everything, we probably need something to laugh at. So, here's something to laugh at. <laughs> this is one of those audiophile grade Toshlink cables. Um, if you don't know exactly what a Toshlink cable is, or it's not really a cable, it's more of a, well, I guess technically it is a cable, but it's not, it's an optical cable, so it only carries light. But if you don't know what this is, I suggest watching Technology Connections video on the history of this. But uh, once you do that, you'll understand how goofy this actually is. Um, because all this does is carry the same type of coaxial digital signal that just plugging a little RCA jack thing into it would because uh, you can use that as a coaxial for digital audio and it's literally the exact same signal. So I thought we'd laugh at some of the monstrous claims <laughs> on this box. <laughs> I don't remember how much I paid for it but I'm pretty sure it wasn't ten dollars. I think I got this at the Bainbridge Island Rotary Auction, and I probably paid about a dollar or two for it in a bundle with a bunch of other things. Anyway, Monster Cables are good cables. They obviously aren't bad, but they're overpriced and they're sold by dubious means. So it looks like, judging by the logo and all the fonts and everything, that this is a bit of an older one. I guess it would be because not very many people use Toslink anymore. I mean, even my Pioneer SB07, which is a 10-year-old, oof, coming up on, I guess, 12-year-old receiver, uh, even that has no real use for this. I mean, I could use it if I wanted to, but if I want DTS master audio or uncompressed audio, I have to use HDMI because this just doesn't have the bandwidth. So I guess I'll read some of this goofy stuff before I open it. So they're calling this an Interlink Lightspeed 100. I wonder if there were other cables that were like a 200 or 300 series. Yeah, like 200, 300 dollars more. <laughs> and that's the only difference. Uh, but in all seriousness, um, yeah, I don't know why they call it 100, aside from marketing, I guess. So on the front, it claims Highest resolution digital interconnect cable with precision termination for accurate sound reproduction. Greater clarity, higher resolution, more accurate signal transfer, exceptional optical performance. <laughs> exceptional optical performance as opposed to what? Not opposed to a cheap cable, like maybe opposed to, yeah, like more accurate signal transfer? Probably not. Higher resolution? How? Greater clarity? How? Like, yeah. They don't even try and back this up. Uh, fiber optic cable for the most accurate dig digital signal transfer as opposed to a coax. See, what they're hoping is that people either don't know or have forgotten that you can just plug one of these into your receiver, and uh, this will carry CD quality digital audio. That's for the magic of digital. You don't need two of them, and you get better quality. And it does carry the exact same signal as this thing. Fiber optic cable for the most accurate digital signal transfer. For use with DVD, CD, mini disc, and DAC. Yeah, I guess having it mentioned mini disc, I guess that sort of dates it to a specific time period. Precision pulse fiber reduces digital jitter for smooth natural sound reproduction. Yeah. Specially tuned fiber for more precise digital bitstream transfer. Yeah. Flexible and protective Duraflex jacket prevents fiber damage. Okay, so now that's actually legitimate because these are fragile. So having one of these that's high quality is not a bad thing at all, especially back in the day when these had more of a purpose. Like, there's nothing wrong with getting high quality cables, even digital ones. But past a certain point, you get the laws, you get into the laws of diminishing returns, and with digital forces, 
that threshold appear way, way sooner than analog cables. Now, am I the only one who thinks that that is a bit too close to the Dolby Digital logo? Like, Dolby? Mm. Alright, let's go back to the back here. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the glare here. High-performance fiber optic cable delivers improved bit stream transfer for clearer, smoother sound from satellite receivers, outboard DAC, mini disc, DVD, and CD player. Okay. Ordinary talk link cables with ordinary construction deliver ordinary sound. Well, it delivers the exact same sound. <laughs> While the variety of digital sources on the market continues to grow, the availability of high-quality fiber optic cables has lagged far behind. Citation needed. Cables with Toslink connections abound. Finding one that lives up to the level of performance required by a digital source, however, is no easy task. In fact, most Toslink cables feature second-rate construction and cheap materials. Oh, because they can. Watch Technology Connections video. That was sort of the point of Toslink. <laughs> the result? Inferior data transfer. Not really. A landmine for the enthusiast in search of the better sound digital components are capable of delivering. Interleak. Light speed 100 fiber optic cable precision polishing and rugged design make the difference. Light speed 100 offers high performance and value and a durable design. Well, Durable design, yeah. That's so far the only valid selling point of this cable. A high-density molded PVC connector boot with heavy-duty string relief provides superior protection of the delicate fiber. The fiber itself is encased in a protective, flexible Duraflex jacket that makes routing through entertainment furniture and shelving easy. A precision polished termination and specifically tuned fiber deliver incredibly accurate transfer of digital audio floor signals. Yeah, just like the cheap one. The resulting reduction in jitter causing dispersion in the digital data stream means smoother, more natural sound. And because ILF 100 is a purely opt. Okay, so they have sort of a model number there? Okay, interlink likely. I get it. If a purely optical means of transferring bit streams, you won't run the risk of annoying ground problems like humming bugs. Yeah, you know what else does that? The really cheap $5 one. <laughs> Pause for a moment. Okay, I can't believe I didn't catch this, but I was editing this and... Wow. Okay, so... It says that you won't run the risk of annoying ground problems like humming bugs. Uh, yeah. That's due to the nature of the fiber optics. That was sort of the theory behind using light instead of a cable. But because it's digital, it's basically impossible to get hum and buzz. So, yeah, I can't believe I didn't catch that because that's arguably the most absurd piece of writing on this packaging. Okay, back to the video. Now, I think I should clarify. I do consider myself sort of an audiophile, like an audio equipment enthusiast. I take audio quality more seriously than most people do, but I can still enjoy low bitrate music from time to time because the music is good. Um, so I don't pretend that I have to have tens of thousands of dollars of equipment to enjoy music. So I can appreciate high-end cables and stuff, but they have to make sense. Part of the appeal of digital is that you don't need high-quality cable to get good sound. Monster Precision Polished Toslink Connection Maximizes Transmission Traditionally, connections have proven to be the weak link in fiber optic design. Monster has overcome this obstacle by precision polishing our connection for a perfect termination of the fiber. The result is a high signal transmission, low internal reflection, and minimization of jitter and time distortion for cleaner, more natural sound. So basically what they're saying is that it's over-engineered. Now that's not inherently a bad thing, obviously, but there's just no point. It really is quite over-engineered for a cable that's only two meters long. If this thing was ridiculously long, then that would make more sense, but there's just no point. Get the best possible digital audio performance. Whether decoding a Dolby Digital or a DTS soundtrack, enjoying the pleasure of a high-performance DAC, 
or recording your favorite music, Interleak Light Speed 100 delivers clean, natural sound. Yeah, just like all the other ones. Now, an interesting thing about this is how they specifically mention recording your favorite music. So, they're actually sort of implying that they endorse recording speedy quality audio. Huh. I wonder how the music industry would feel about that. Here again, let's claim that's the most accurate. Interlink Lightspeed 100 high performance fiber optic cable with top link connectors offer superior signal transfer for DVD, CD, DAC. <laughs> they mentioned digital audio tape, like mini disc and DAC. For every application, whether home theater decoding or two channel digital to audio, digital to analog conversion, Lightspeed 100 delivers exceptional clarity and value. Uh, probably not value. Precision polished terminations and finely tuned fiber optimize signal transfer of all your digital audio workloads with Toslink connection. For the best possible fiber optic connection, Lightspeed 100 leads the way. Well, yeah, it does, but again, it's pointless. <laughs> And here they're just basically repeating themselves and pointing to different features on the cable, so I won't read that. You can read it yourself if you want. Now down here there are some interesting and sort of funny things, but I'm gonna have to open the package first so that we can read that. One thing though that I did find interesting was that it has a 100% replacement warranty. Monsters live forever. I wonder how long that lasted. I don't I think that was a very long-term thing, but maybe it was. I guess if you... I mean, that does sort of imply to me that you can get a new one no matter what happens, even if you step on it or break it or something. I don't know. Maybe we should read the warranty. Alright, finally, at long last, it's time to take this thing apart. Now, another thing that's pretty unique about this packaging, I have to hand it to Monster, I do like the packaging quite a bit. Because it's not actually a blister pack. You don't need flippers to open this at all. You just tear it apart with your hands. See, it's already open. And it's held in. It's held in by these little plastic rivets. I've never really seen anything quite like it. Uh... I didn't know that was a thing at all. There's also another one. Yeah, there's one here, and there's one here. And that's all that's really holding it in. I mean, even in the bottom, it's open like that. It doesn't open this way like you'd think it would. So, let's give it a go. Let's get the steak knife. <laughs> Open her up. I'm going to try and cut the rivet first. Save the packaging. Mm. I can tell that's not going to be the way to do it. So let's try this. Come on. Maybe I should just yank it. Dang this thing. There we go. Alright, I'm just gonna open that one rivet. And there's the cable. I'm just gonna leave it in there. Um, it's just the cog link cable. And here are the hookup instructions that mentioned. It basically just tells you to take the protective plastic off. Because these things all have these little protective caps on them. So yeah, it basically says, don't be an idiot. Sort of ironic. Interweek light speed 100 is protected under one or more of the following U.S. and international patents. And with a whole bunch of patents. Hmm. That's interesting. I wonder if those are patents held by Monster and or held by Toshiba. 
because ever wonder why it's called T Toss Link TOF. Here's the funniest part. Monster, Monster Cable, Interlink, Lightspeed, and Duraflex are registered and unregistered trademark the Monster Cable. So they're, what they're doing here is any one of those may or may not be a trademark, but they're basically saying they're trying to scare people into not using Monster and uh, Lightspeed, which I'm guessing those two are not actually trademarks held by Monster, but they're trying to imply that they are. And of course it's made in China. I find it interesting that that's a sticker though. Maybe they had different places that they were made. Okay, one more thing. I see a little tag on here and I'm curious. I want to see what it is. So, uh, I guess I will take it out of the packaging after all. Here we go. Yeah, it's basically just saying, don't be an idiot, remove the cap before putting it in to your stereo. <laughs> I mean, to be honest, anybody can make that mistake, I probably could too. I'm only human. Well, there you go. That was a look at a vintage, high-quality talk link cable. Yeah, I love laughing at stuff like this. I do honestly feel a bit sorry for people who think that they needed something like this back in the day. And it still happens. You can pay tens of thousands of dollars for cables for no reason. And it's sort of bad. As Dave Jones from the EV blog says, it's the audio fool market. And yeah, that's very true. It does rely on fooling people. I mean, there's no other way to say it. Like, these claims back here, most of them are not valid, objectively speaking. Should I try registering the warranty? Ooh. Well, that was a light hard look at the Interlink Lightspeed 100 talk link cable. Uh, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, then give me some ideas for some better videos. Uh, I have a lot of weird junk like this around, and I'm looking forward to sharing it with everybody. Yeah, the thing mentioned mini disc player. Maybe, 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 maybe. Well, thanks for watching. Catch you next time.